So I just wanted to share with you, I've been a member of the church, like, I was raised in the church, I, I love God, I love Jesus, but, like, okay. what I worry about when I see this out here is that you are, like, sending people out of the church, you're for people's hearts, when I think we should be, like, showing them love, bringing them in, what, what's your thoughts on that? Like, you're out here yelling at people. Um, well, it's, uh, it's very loving to, to warn people who are in danger of hell. To, I mean, we raise our voices so they can hear us, and like I'm not raising my voice now because you know in a one-on-one -on -one -on -one conversation, but but open air preaching they did that in the Bible and Jesus did it, and they had to be loud because how are you going to talk to a, a, a big group of people without raising your voice, and and so um, and it's very loving to to warn people who are in rebellion to God that the Bible says speaking the truth in love and in Proverbs 27. Better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, and deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. So they, we're, we're, we're out here to deliver the faithful wounds of a friend to people who are, are used to hearing the deceitful, the deceitful kisses of the enemy. And one of those deceitful kisses of the enemy... So I'm going to pause you right there. Yeah, go ahead. I, I was raised in the church, I was raised in the Bible. I can quote scripture back at you all day. We could play okay. this game. I don't know. Oh, it's not a game. It's, it's not a game. It becomes like an intellectual game of back and forth arguing scripture. And I don't, I'm not here to do that. I'm, I'm just answering what, what, what you're asking. I, I just want to ask you... How, how many people have you brought into the church by doing this? I have absolutely no idea. Nobody does. So then why are you doing it? I don't, well, I don't need to know how many people have been saved through, through the preaching. In fact, if any if any Christian says they know, then I call them a liar because you don't know what God's doing in people's hearts or how many people become false converts, how many people actually get saved. So I, I don't know, but I don't need to know. So what if instead of doing this on the weekends, you guys volunteered with me at the soup kitchen and helped feed people and helped at the food pantry, and then we could actually know how many people we brought into the church and how many people we helped? Uh, you still wouldn't know. Because again, you don't know who gets saved, who doesn't get saved, who, who, who says, yeah, I love Jesus now, but then they go back to the world and, and, and they go out from among us, they go out from us because they're not of us, as the Bible says. So, and so actually, if you build a relationship with someone and you fall up with them, and you become a part of their life and you mentor them and build into them and bring them into the church, then you do know what's happening in their life because you have a relationship with them and you're not just yelling at them from the street corner. Well, you can't do that with everybody. You you can do that with with a, with a few, with some people, well, but. Well, you don't know that you're helping anyone. You just told me that. But I can't. What? I, I'm no, no, no. We're not. I don't know if we're, if anyone's being saved. I wish I could talk to you, but I can't because he's yelling again. Oh, I can hear what you're saying, saying just fine. But but we need we need to preach because they preached in, in the Bible and nobody wanted to hear it. You know that? I don't think this is how Jesus preached to anyone. Really? Do you, do you read the Bible every day? I do read the Bible every day. And so, there's, there's no point where he's standing on a street, street corner yelling at people at a farmer's market. Well, Just well. the passage where he did that one time. Well, unless then he preached to farmer's markets, but he preached to people to, like, when he when he fed the, 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 uh, the thousands, he preached to them, and he had to raise his voice, so I'm sure he was shouting at them I'm so sure they could he hear. I did, but they wanted to hear him. They were there to hear him. Uh, well, also, you, you recall, though. It's my go ahead. turn. Yeah, go ahead. I would like to say that Jesus also was really not a fan of what the Pharisees were doing. They were weaponizing religion for their own gain, right. for their own means to put themselves up on a platform like social media to say, look at how holy I am. I'm doing all oh, this. Careful. Work. Careful on, on what you're, you're saying as an accusation, because we don't we're not out here saying we're holier than thou. I'm talking all. about the Pharisees. If you identify yeah. with that, that is. I don't. No, I don't. Okay. So huh. then, Jesus did not like that. He flipped their tables right. in public. He right. had righteous anger right. because of those Pharisees and their action. Right. And you identified them with them yourself. No, I don't. Saying you're putting yourself. In no, I, no, I, I just no. I, so let me talk. Okay, you're I'm, I'm trying to answer a false accusation. No, let me be shocking and Go then ahead. you can answer. Go ahead. Okay, I think you're putting yourself in those very shoes of those Pharisees, and I just want to bring that perspective. As someone who is in the church, I feel like you are hurting the cause by being out here and doing what you were doing, and that that makes me so sad. What, what would you say the gospel is? I think the gospel is mm -hmm. spreading love. This is not love. Where does the Bible say that anywhere, that the gospel is spreading love? For God so loved, what does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Yes. What that? And what does it say after that? You tell me. Okay, let's t let's take a look at it. Because <clears throat> people love quoting that, and then they, they conveniently leave out the rest of it. Okay. John chapter 3. Continues on. For, 
For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be, might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the Son of God. And the last verse, I never hear anyone bring this one up, the last verse in John chapter 3, he who, he, he who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son or believe the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And what I tell people, what I believe the Bible says the Gospel is, is what Jesus said himself and John the Baptist early on in the Gospel of Matthew, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That word repent is throughout the Gospels, through, throughout the book of Acts. They, they never, not once in the book of Acts do I see that they say God loves you, that Jesus loves you. Nowhere. See, I see so it nowhere. you don't think that Jesus or God loves you? Uh, saints, yes. Not unbelievers. Because I see scriptures that say that, that God actually hates, I was actually quoting it earlier, that God abhors the man of bloodshed and deceit. Right. And that his soul abhors the man, the one who loves violence. And now, that's a false gospel that Jesus loves everyone. I've heard, we've, we've heard people say that at pride events, at, at baby murder celebrations, and people going in, in to murder their babies at Planned Parenthood, we've heard them say, Jesus loves me, God will forgive me. They get that because they think that they've heard that false gospel that Jesus loves me. That's not the, that's not the biblical gospel. Right, I think we're getting a little bit off track. Just talking about yeah. pride, talking about abortion. I just want to say that like, I, I wish you guys would put your energy into doing something that we can show as helping people instead of being on a street corner yelling at people at the Saturday market. Well, I show, I, me, show me the Bible words. That, can you show, show me that this me the isn't Bible biblical? Show me the Bible where it shows that it's okay to have pictures like this out at a Saturday okay, market. Okay, I'll, I'll show you. And, and what is does it, it say to do that? I'm, I'm going to answer. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 2. God says to show the bloody city her abominations. What is the context of that verse? Well, you're welcome is to Is it talking about Grants Pass, Oregon, or is it talking about something very specific? It's not talking about Grants Pass, Oregon, it's but not. it's talking about... But the scriptures okay. you've used aren't, aren't talking about Grants Pass either, right? So the, we use the Bible to, for, I, for today. It applies. I'm here with my family. I'm going to go back to shopping with them. Okay. I just wanted to share with you my perspective. Okay. I, I would hope that you guys would hear me out and help people and help the community. I'm hearing you. And I'll spend your time doing this because like, it hurts my heart why, to why see do you, you guys here. Why do you think you're a Christian? Why do you why? think you're a Christian, ma'am? Are you sure you're a Christian? Don't be deceived, ma'am. Please don't be deceived. 